everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, Laura and I, who is behind the camera, um, we're gonna go to two different estate sales and show you what we get, bring you along. And we also wanna thank everyone. We hit 11,000 subscribers, which is wow. so amazing. So thank you all for subscribing. And if you aren't subscribed, um, we'd love for you to subscribe. So let's go to those estate sales. All right, guys, here's the home of the estate sale. This is the second day. On the first day, they had some whole towered, but I just wanted to sleep in. <laughs> I didn't feel like getting up super early. So we're gonna go in today on second day and see what is left for us. Hopefully some good finds. The first thing we saw, guys, I kid you not, were these two Santa dolls up in the front. The big one was 50 and the little guy was 25, which is a fantastic price. Not expecting these to be here. You're gonna have to wait and see whether or not we pick these up. So then we headed into this room which had toys mainly. There were some Barbies, mainly the cases, and there were some of these really cute older dolls. I like this one in the little green dress. I also came across this doll. I don't know who she is. If you guys know, definitely leave a comment. She was really interesting and $12, but I wasn't too sure who she was. This Holly Hobby case was really cute and then I noticed there were a ton of cameras in the back which can be great resellers. We didn't really look at them too long before I saw this whole pile of Teddy Ruxpin items which was cool and another Barbie set. Everything here was priced pretty well. It was definitely a very well organized sale. Everything was laid out and labeled for the most part. These Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I guess they were tissues, were really interesting. I think they are older because when I took a look at the back, it said Mirage Studios, which is a good way to authenticate an older vintage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle item from a newer one. I went over to these Teddy Ruxpin books, which I've never really seen before. Teddy Ruxpin was a little bit before my childhood, so it was pretty cool to look through them. And whoever had this collection must have really liked Teddy Ruxpin because I came across this bag like paper bag uh, there was a ton of them and it said the world of Teddy Ruxpin from 1985 I think um really cool it must have come from a store I guess let me know if you guys know there were some older books there weren't a ton but the ones that I did find were really cute little town mouse but I particularly loved this bunny blue book I actually have come across it before in worse condition so I was thinking of getting it it's definitely an older book but I did leave it behind because we have quite a book collection and then I also came across some vintage pennants, which were really cool. This Philadelphia Zoo one, as well as this Magic Valley from Bushkill, Pennsylvania, I think. I was really excited to come across this Garbage Pail Kids mug. It is plastic. It's from the 80s. It has a bunch of really cool characters on it. And I think it's a pretty good flip. You guys got to stick around to the end to see how much it's worth. But I did pick this one up. This is the one camera that I did pick up. It just caught my eye being pink and I looked up some comps and this can resell pretty well. It even had the original bag with it, but I did leave it behind. That was more of a Janine pickup, I felt like, and I didn't pick it up. We then went into this sunroom where there were some more toys, but it was mainly a bunch of cassettes and albums. I thought the Snow White box holder was pretty cool, but it was $3 and these are hard sells. It's really the dolls that sell rather than the cases. Janine came across some cassettes, and then I came across some albums, some Christmas albums, which, you know, I'm always on the lookout for. I thought Friendly the Snowman was a very funny knockoff of Frosty the Snowman. Nothing crazy here, but the one album I did pick up I thought was so adorable. It almost had these little, like, snow baby looking characters on the front. There was some writing and pencil that I think I can get out, but look how cute they are, guys. I absolutely loved it. And then at the front of the house, before we paid, we saw these vintage Mickey Mouse watches. There were a ton. It was really cool to see. And we're going to head out now. Sneaky Janine on the way out. What did you grab? Uh, Angelica and um, Susie from Rugrats. Yeah. Watch. They had it on the table. And she paid $5 for it, which I think is a good price. Yeah, from the Regrets in Paris movie. Cute. <laughs> Very nice. So um, we got a few things. I know those Santas were an incredible price. Definitely worth it. I did not pick them up. Mainly. Shocking. I know. I was, <laughs> guys, I was so close. But um, it came down to like a storage space. <sighs> for now, you know, we don't have a huge place. So I resisted and I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, but I do hope a collector picks them up. It was really cool because the um, the state owner, the state owner um, he he worked for Pepsi back in the day, and 
he said that that was the Santa that they used for their display and he has the original box with it which is really beat up but I thought that was really cool that it came right from the uh he was like a store owner or a manager it's pretty cool so here is the estate sale um we are gonna head in we are a little late to this one um but we're gonna check it out the first thing I found at the sale was this vintage 1994 Fisher Price plush and you guys are not going to believe the comps on this. This is about the third one I found so far. I was super excited to see this one. This sale was more of a digger sale. Things were basically left the way that the house was when we walked in. So if you guys aren't familiar, a digger sale is when the state sale company sort of leaves everything as is and the people who come in like us who are shoppers are encouraged to dig through things, to look through boxes and quite literally dig through the estate. They're more common in our area, and sometimes when we walk into an estate sale that has already been started for an hour or two, things can look very messy. Um, but we do do our best to go through things respectfully and keep things in order. But you know, there's no way that we can keep things 100% clean when that's just the nature of these types of sales. And I love them, Janine and I like them, because we really get to see the stories behind the pieces, see what you know, the history of everything is. So for example, this bed was just, when I walked into the sale, it was filled with different ephemera and cards and it was just so fun to look through everything. It looked like there could have been a bunch of older greeting cards that I might've missed out on when the sale first started, but there were a few stragglers left and Janine might have found some really good ones. So you guys are gonna have to see at the end of this video. There was some older Christmas, not a ton, this box of gold ornaments was probably the best of what was at the sale when we got there. But at this point, I'm just going through because there are so many little things you can miss. You know, that's what we also really like about a digger sale. At a lot of the organized sales, like you never know what was tossed, um, what the estate sale or the estate owners may have thought that people don't want. So it's such a great opportunity to be able to go through these boxes that were literally left untouched. And you know, resellers or just collectors have a lot of knowledge and things that other people might not. So it's always fun to be able to look through things and determine the value ourselves. You know, maybe somebody's looking for a macaroni ornament. <laughs> you never know. So I didn't find anything else in this box. It was mainly just, you know, 70s through 80s and some older broken ornaments, which is also the downside of a digger sale. You're going to come across a lot of broken things. But I really like them too because then you can repurpose broken items and you can craft with things. That's such a great aspect of these types of sales. The woman who owned this home was also a very big doll collector, which is an area that I don't have a lot of knowledge in and Janine doesn't know too much about. Um, these dolls had a ton of detail though and were really cool to look at. This entire upstairs bedroom, it was a bit of a mess again, but it was filled with dolls and doll toys and all different types of dollhouse things. I thought this panda little bag was really cute. And I also came across some really cute dolls like these two. I mean, how sweet are they? I don't know too much about them, but they were all definitely vintage. You could probably tell that they're vintage just by looking at them. This one was made in Portugal. I thought they were really cute together. And I picked them up, but I didn't end up getting them. I did come across this Norcross greeting card bag from the card store, which was so cool to see and a little hide and seek book, as well as this really amazing Native American toy that was made out of plastic. I thought he was really cool. There was some vintage clothing, um, not a ton, but a, you know, a good amount. The one that caught my eye was this one with the poodle on it. And there were some older shirts. I also came across some like older perfume. A lot of these things were left untouched. It was quite a time capsule. And then right off to the side, I saw a little pamphlet for like, I guess it was for a rum company. I always love the illustrations and just looking through some of these recipes. I came across some more records. There were a lot of records all across the home. A lot of them that I don't have knowledge on, like actual bands and, you know, collectibles. A lot of the records sell for a lot of money, but just not our expertise. And I thought this home barbershop kit was really cool. I then came across Janine. We sort of met up and we looked through these albums. I really loved the artwork on them and they were all different children's albums and had really cute graphics on them. There was a bunch of them too and I'm sure the price would have been really great on these. They're just not super collectible and again like what we know is mainly holiday so 
I was mainly on the lookout for any Rudolph or Snowman or I guess Frosty the Snowman albums, which can have a good resale value. Nothing crazy, but those are the ones that we really enjoy keeping an eye out for. Now I'm going to hand the mic back to Janine and back to present day filming. It turned like green. Yeah, it's tarnished. Wow, look at that. I wanted to show you this thing I found. This old photo album. Our trip to Florida, November 1931. The snapping turtle. 1931. Wow. Isn't that really cool? Mm -hmm. We like it. They one for Christmas and they're their Christmas toys. Oh, cute. Wow. It's like an old Rudolph. Yeah. Like 40s broken, or 50s. Broken, but made in USA. That is so cool. Wow. I do like this book too. All right, guys, we're out of that sale. I cannot believe some of the things or one of the things that Janine grabbed. And I got a few things, nothing crazy, but we only spent $5. This is one of our favorite estate sale companies to go to. We typically find some good stuff for a great price. And we're gonna show you what we got. Right now I'm waiting for Janine. We had to pull over because she saw a bird that she wanted to look at. So she's going out there and looking at the bird. I was a little too cold to go out, but we're gonna let her look at the bird and then we're gonna show you guys what we got. Here she comes. She And I, I don't want to undermine the bird. It, it was a cool water bird, she said, but l let's have her tell us ourselves. So how was the bird? The bird was good. What kind of bird was it? I don't know. Did you take pictures? Yeah. Oh, okay. I took a video too to show people. Yo, look at that bird. Whoa. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. So I picked up some cassette tapes at the one estate sale and i already listed those and three of those um were meatloaf cassette tapes and i just packaged those up um and sold them so um i believe it was a viewer so thank you for buying those and that's why i can't show them right now i picked up marbles yeah you sure did i got marbles um finally i've been kind of like I've been thinking about like collecting some marbles here and there. I used to when I was a kid and I, I lost them. I don't know what happened to them. So yeah, I found a bunch of marbles. These are uh, just some of the ones that I found. Um, I'm very excited because I was thinking of, over the summer of buying some marbles when we were out in Pennsylvania. But for some reason, I just I couldn't pull the trigger on any. So seeing them at this estate sale, I was like, I'm going to get these marbles. And I'm so happy I did. This one is super cool. I don't know much about marbles. I'm learning. So if anyone knows anything, uh, leave a comment below. I had to pick up this Rugrats in Paris um, watch. It is from the year 2000. So there's the watch. So nostalgic. So fun. Not sure if this has ever been used, but um, yeah, very nostalgic. Had to pick it up. And what was it? $5? $5. $5 yeah. Yeah. At the first estate sale, I did not end up getting those Santas. I don't regret it. I'm sure a collector came by and picked it up. It was a great price, just not something that I'm looking to add to the collection right now. But I was really excited to find this record. That's so cute. I thought it was so cute. I also found this 1986 Garbage Pail Kids Cup. It's like a little plastic kids cup. I thought it was so cool. I think it resells for about $15 or so. I probably will resell it either on eBay or in the new year as we get a little bit closer. At the second estate sale, I found something that was so cool. This Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer um, snow globe. I forgot the name of what this was. <laughs> um, he's so cool. So the base of him is broken, but I don't care. He is so cool. He Look at says that. right there, he has this little label. I mean, this is really cool. This is like from the 50s. This is an old Rudolph piece. These are hard to find, the older Rudolph pieces. Mm -hmm. Rudolph came out in 1939, I think. But what I thought was really cool about this, Janine, is that this is glass. Yeah, it's like a real 
um, glass snow globe, which obviously like a lot of snow globes now you just see are, are plastic. So really cool. And um, I'm gonna keep this in the collection. Great find. Thanks. I found so many vintage cards in the basement and they are really cool. Look at this one. This is a photo card. How cool is that? We don't come across these no. very often. So it's very cool to see. Also like love these cards. Just classic, classic Christmas cards. I have one in here that I just thought was so cute. How adorable. adorable. And these are from the 1950s and 60s. Pretty collectible. Really fun to look through. I can't believe you found so much. Yeah, I can flip through them a little bit. Some of them, there's a few birthday. They're mostly um, Christmas. Stuff you just don't see today. Look at that one. So fun. Great find, Shireen. Thank you. I know there was a really cute snowman one in there. Look at that. That's different, too. Hmm? There it is. How cute. So a few of them like that, the really cute and kitschy ones. Very nice uh, find, Janine. I'm surprised. Thank you. That they were still there. I know. I know. There's a lot of cards in the bedroom, but I think people had already gone through that. Mm -hmm. So you found some good hidden stuff. Thank you. I didn't pick up a ton of stuff at the second sale, but that woman really loved her dolls. I came across a number of these dolls. They are called Pocket Dolls. She is from 1968, which I couldn't believe. She looked like something from the 70s to me. She's so cute. She's got her little hat. She is really cute. She's surprisingly made in Japan. Now these don't resell for a lot of money, but I thought she was really cute. So I just picked her up. I don't know what I'm gonna do with her yet, but I couldn't leave her behind. I also found this little made in Japan bunny. Adorable. Really cute. He even has a Japan sticker on the back. Wow. And hidden in some of the um, doll clothes upstairs was this little Christmas angel. Oh, wow. She has a little feather for hair. She has a mercury bead necklace and is probably from the 1950s, maybe early 1960s. Before we go, we wanted to thank Claire and Wendy for sending us this lovely gift. It is such a pretty brooch. Definitely something that we will display with and this wonderful Christmas card. So thank you again, Wendy and Claire. And that wraps up today's video. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you on the next. Thanks for joining us guys. Merry Christmas. See you next time. Whoa, you're just going Bye. different places. Bye everyone.